HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the anchor desk to fill you in with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, Hiller Boys Basketball gets ready for the playoffs. We have scenes from the Hopkinton High School Science and Engineering Fair. And Matt Clark will let you know what's coming up on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. The Cops for Kids with Cancer organization, in coordination with the Hopkinton Police Department, presented Hopkinton Middle School student Gabriel Sanchez with a $5,000 check to help his fight with cancer. We're from Cops for Kids with Cancer. We're a small charity basically out of Massachusetts. It was a charity started by a Boston police officer uh, who since passed away, but, um, and it's been taken over by almost all policemen and retired policemen. What we do is we raise funds through different, you know, golf tournaments, uh, uh, bingo nights, those type of things, you know, small scale. We pull all our money from all the police in the state, and then we get um, people recommended to us who need some help. Either a policeman recommends you, or a social worker recommends you. And uh, he's been recommended, and, you know, we agree to help this family, and that's why we're here today. We only have the resources to do eight families per month in the whole of New England, actually. Um, and again, you know, this is where we like to be. Um, what we always start off with is that, going back to what I said, it was started by a Boston policeman. Even though, you know, you're Hopkins police, I happen to be state police, the, um, we give a Boston police badge. So whenever he looks at it, he'll realize, the, you know, these guys did it. That's right. But, you know, we represent all police, you know. Uh, and then we always start off with, we uh, always give everybody a beer Aww. and, uh, you don't have to, you can hide that, you don't have to bring it back to school. <laughs> <laughs> that was my I'll one concern to the chief. I said, Chief, there's a chief of beers on the guys here. I mean, we're not giving them the beer. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you what happened is, I was similar 10 years, 15 years ago, and my friend who happened to be on the New Jersey State Police, him and his wife come to my house and bring me a five foot Mickey Mouse. I still can't hide that. <laughs> you know, and I'm, never, I'm never sure when he's gonna show up, so I can't put it in the cellar. <laughs> and then we give you a shirt, one of our shirts, a Coffee Kids Cancer shirt. Ooh. Now you don't have to wear these things, it just tells us who we are. And if you wear ball caps, we give you a ball cap, you know. And we have a few other things here, and uh, even for, for all the policemen here too, is that I, I always bring pins. And, um, and that, you know, that's the same one that I have them on my lapel and oh, thank you. the march. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We've done uh, 669 families. Wow, so that's far, incredible. For over $3.3 million. That's uh, incredible. And uh, a great part of it comes from the marathon, which Billy's in charge of. Oh, yeah. You know, raising show. money from the, from the marathon. Mm -hmm. So we have a great fondness for Hopkinton. Absolutely. In, in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> and a great fear of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing worse than coming here at 7 o'clock in the morning on race day. <laughs> and not being paid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did the marathon in Boston for 40 years. Wow. Uh, the first one was uh, they did it at the Lexington Hotel and they gave the guy a wreath yep. for his head. <laughs> and that was all we got. Yeah. Wow. And we really hope that everything goes good. You know, you can contact, you see all your friends running all the place, so you, if you need anything, you know, they're the ones you want to go to. And if you have anything in the hospital, you can go to me because I'm there all the time, too. Oh, you know, the, um, you. You know I'm, I'm usually there once a week, or the chief, too. We're usually there once a week in Dana Faba. Okay. And maybe twice. Yeah. Right. But usually it has a bumper sticker, of cops or kids with cancer. And I say, what police officer would give you a ticket if you had that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll have to send it to us and we'll get into the family. <laughs> but I always mention, maybe the state police would. Yeah. 
Yeah, right. Teaches <laughs> <laughs> it's tough on me. <laughs> it teaches me everything I know, but I'm not going to repeat that. <laughs> and don't think I haven't done this before. I've actually left and brought the check back with me. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, no, in Rhode Island one time, they wanted one of those six-foot checks. Yeah. Oh, I gave them the six-foot check. And I never gave him this check. <laughs> and you can't cash, you can't that, cash so. those big When I call them up, I, they just, we didn't know if this is what you brought to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been funny in the bank. They would have, what are you talking about? Wolf in the window. That's really cool. But she would get you in the Thank you. Oh. Okay, and then so, that's the help you. You definitely get better. that Xbox. Right? Yeah, right. Drack <laughs> <laughs> was a big help on putting this together yeah. for our game. So. Cool. So, well, she's been amazing, yeah. and yeah. So, I will. It's, you guys are amazing. Never mind. That's right. <laughs> you, I don't want to start crying, but yeah, no, everybody in it. this town has been amazing. It's, I know I won't stop crying. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's actually one year this week that Gabe was diagnosed. That's true. Yep. Oh, yeah. Um. So he's he's come a long, long way, and he's been he's okay. been amazing, yeah. amazing. Huh. I won't cry. I won't embarrass you and start crying. You just say yes. <laughs> but, but you can still hide the baby before you go back to school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mom, will, Mom will take that for you. So <laughs> back uh, months ago when we uh, grew our beards in November, um, that was to raise money for breast cancer and cancer. So the police association wrote a check for Gabe for three thousand um, dollars yeah, to just help offset some of the travel expenses so um, there's also cops of kids with cancer and I thought that uh, Gabe would be a great candidate for that and so I applied uh, through that for him in which he would receive the award so um, with the help from nurse Burke from the middle school we were able to uh, Fill out the application, we sent it in, and we were notified that uh, Gabe was a uh, recipient of it. Thank you. The annual Hopkinton High School Science and Engineering Fair took place. As usual, the projects were very impressive. I basically tested if the polyphenols in green tea can uh, prevent and cure cancer in a living organism. Terrific. How long did it take you to? Um, I, my study was for, for about three or four weeks. All right, excellent. Last question. What made you want to do this topic? Um, I'm really into cancer research and like the medical field is something I really want to go into in the future. So. Abby Fisher was the lone senior in this year's fair and was recognized for her participation during her high school years. So thank you so much, Abby. Abby joined our science fair program last year as a junior. For those of you that don't know Abby, this is one of her many, many talents. She's a three-sport athlete. She's a very um, enthusiastic student in the sciences and many other subjects. She's been a great role model for lots of our younger students of how to kind of do it all and balance a lot of different um, commitments that she made. She's been a great addition to our program. We're really going to miss you next year, but best of luck and congratulations, Abby. Abby was also recently named a National Merit finalist. All right, so I understand that you're a uh, National Merit finalist. Um, can you explain what that's all about? Um, so it's a national competition that people can enter in their junior year by taking the PSAT. And then people who score in the top percentile are nominated as semi-finalists. And then you can send in an application after that to become a finalist, which is just basically a personal essay and a copy of grades, test scores, things like that. And that seems like a pretty uh, tough thing to do. Uh, were you surprised to get it at all, or did you uh, have faith that you are going to get it? Um, well, I was working hard towards that goal, but I was pretty surprised when I got it because it's a pretty hard honor to earn, and so I was just really excited to have been um, able to achieve something like that. 
All right, well, uh, congratulations. Thank you. The top three projects determined by the judges were named and nine additional projects were named to compete in the regional tournament. Overall, it was the highest participation rate ever for the science and engineering fair, 97 students and a total of 51 projects. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and healthcare services. There were many great projects at this year's Hopkinton High School Science and Engineering Fair. There was a record 97 student participants and 51 projects on display. Twelve of those projects were chosen to advance on to the regionals. Here's a look at the award ceremony. ...into our awards. So we're going to announce the top three awards. The top three prizes go uh, get a gift from the HBTA and will also go on to the regional fair at WPI. And then nine additional projects from Hopkinton will go to the regional fair next week to represent Hopkinton High School. So the first uh, award like, I'd like to give out is the third place award. This goes to a freshman. Simran Carr for the mystery behind aerial warfare. And will you just Okay, our second place award goes to a student a returning student, A Nay Nay, patient specific delivery of proton beam radiation. This year goes to a student, Rohan Minosha. <laughs> for automated programmable dispensing of medication. Congratulations. <laughs> so we have nine additional projects that are going to be going on to our regional fair at WPI. And before we um, announce these projects, I just want to make one note, which is most of these projects right now, if you went to any other school in Massachusetts and competed in their science fair, you would probably be one of the top three projects. We have an incredibly competitive project, uh, group this year. This is the large fair in school history. So especially if you're a freshman or a sophomore, this was your first year doing it, we hope you've learned a lot from the experience. We hope you come back and can be up here in the future years. These people all started with a first year project. Simran's only a ninth grader, but she started last year, right? So they get a lot of experience. And so we hope you come back and try it again. You can continue with your topic or study something totally new. But even if you're not one of our top 12 projects, we hope you learned a lot from this experience and enjoyed it. We're really proud of you and you should feel really proud of yourself as well. Okay, so in no particular order, I have nine additional projects I'm gonna um, call out and I'm gonna ask you to come stand up here. And then at the end, the top 12 are gonna meet to talk about some things for regionals. And the rest of the students are going to work on kind of breaking down their projects and cleaning up the room and resetting the library. If you would like to go home with a parent or guardian at the end, that's fine. That's fine with us. <laughs> that's fine with us. Um, but we just ask that you help with the breakdown before we all pack up. Okay, thank you. Okay, so in no particular order, other top nine projects going to regionals. The first one we'll announce is Fateh Mohammed, a novel machine learning. Our next team, our ninth graders, are Cheetah Namali Conti and Tanisha Rajkor. <laughs> Calling 911 when detecting an irregular heart rate using Arduino. Congratulations. Great job. Congratulations. Okay, our next uh, project going to regionals is Trusha Puttaraju, double sex involvement in fruit fly aggression. Our next team is Alisa Stolier and Alana Miller. Let's eat this wheat, removing gluten from the oil. Okay, our next uh, group that's going to go is Far Fariha Fardeen. Spill the tea, sis. Can green <laughs> Our 
Our next regional entry is Elon Rosen and Shazan Khan. <laughs> Engineering of congenic Huntington fibroblast cell lines using CRISPR. Next entry is Tyler Rhodes, early wildfire detection through thermal imaging in drones. <laughs> Our next group, Siri Yaramsetti, Olivia Jones, and Ellery Shuddy. Durability of UV resistant clothing, is it worth the investment? And our last project is uh, for regional entry. It goes to a freshman. The judges were really impressed by this student's enthusiasm and hard work throughout his project, and we're really proud of him. The last entry for regionals is Gabe O'Brien, Fingerprints Through Genetics. All right, thank you everyone for coming. Mr. Bishop, yes. Yes, uh, one no, last thing. Could you please join me in thanking Ms. Murphy? Uh, we could not ask for a more dedicated, committed person to run the science program. Uh, she is wonderful. Uh, she is so dedicated to the science fair. And today is her birthday. <laughs> Hopkinton Hiller's boys basketball is ready for the postseason. I recently caught up with Coach Keen and a couple of the players at practice as they prepared for their first playoff game versus Wayland. Hopkinton Hillers boys basketball finished off the regular season as a playoff qualifier with a record of 14 and 6. The last regular season game was a 63 to 57 win over the Wayland Warriors. The win gave the Hillers the fourth seed and Wayland got knocked down to the fifth seed to set up a Hillers Wayland rematch at the Hopkinton Athletic Center to open the first round of the 2018-2019 state tournament. All right, coach, uh, so congratulations on your uh, 250th career win the other night. You're going back to the postseason, and uh, once again, you're gonna see uh, Wayland. Um, first off, could you just talk about what it's been like to work with this group throughout the season? That's been a fantastic experience working with these uh, kids this year. It's a wonderful team, very together. Uh, the senior captains, Brendan Kelly and Michael Pubicott have done a great job. All right, so you're going to see uh, Wayland again. You saw them once already. Uh, is it maybe a little advantage to see uh, the same team that you've seen already, or do you prefer to see a team you haven't seen? Um, it's a unique situation. We've never really had it before where we end the season with uh, a, the opponent that we're going to face in the tournament. So it's really unique, and I think it's probably uh, the same on both sides. I know they're probably preparing for a lot of the things that we did well against them, and we're trying to do the same here. So I'd imagine it works out pretty evenly for both teams. And you got a great win against uh, Wayland. Um, did you, despite the fact that you won the game, was there any uh, transitions that you saw you had to make for this upcoming playoff game? Oh, there's always, yeah, adjustments that we're going to try to make, definitely, no doubt about it. So, uh, we're trying to do that and over the next two nights, and uh, we're looking forward to having a good crowd on Wednesday night. And uh, lastly, after a kind of a rough start to the season, this team really came around and strung together a number of great wins. Uh, could you just talk about what changed throughout the season in this team? Uh, well, I think that uh, our schedule was very challenging at the beginning of the year. We had five out of six road games. We had some of the toughest opponents on our schedule to open up, and we did great coming out three and three, coming out of it. Our first uh, league game wasn't until the middle of January. Then we ended up winning uh, 13 out of our last 15 games. So I thought that we actually played very well in those six games. It's just that uh, the schedule was against us a little bit, you know. And uh, so I think we've been very consistent with their effort all year long and how well they've played all year long. It's all credit to the players. And also, I've realized that Brendan Kelly has always been dominant in the low post, but he seems to be even more dominant lately and more accurate with his shooting. Can you talk about how he has played recently? Yeah, Brendan has been wonderful all year long. He sets up his teammates for outside shots, and he draws the defense in and usually kicks it out to them. And it was really great to see him in the last game being aggressive and looking for his own shot as well. And we always knew he's a very talented scorer, so it's great to see him doing that now, and we hope he continues it throughout the playoffs. 
the Hillers did a good job at shutting down Wayland's big threats in their final regular season game, and the captains are anxious for a shot to take down the Warriors in the tournament. Uh, it's been really great so far. Uh, the team's really together. I feel like we're all like good friends and have a lot of good chemistry together, so it's been really good to work with these guys. And uh, Brennan, how have you enjoyed playing with this group? Like I said, we have great chemistry. Out of all my years playing basketball here, this is probably one of the closest teams I've been on. So we got that going in. We're not done yet. So T terrific. And you got uh, Wayland coming up once again. Um, are you excited to see uh, Wayland again, or maybe uh, did you prefer a team that maybe you haven't seen before? Uh, I personally definitely love to see him again. We love getting a second chance at another team. Uh, we just played him about a week ago and we were able to get a victory, so hopefully we'll do the same. Well, we know them and they know us, so either way it's going to be a great fight. I'm really, I've been excited for it all week ever since we played them. So see how it goes. All right, guys. Well, we wish you the very best of luck in the postseason. Thank you. Another Hillers team that made the state tournament was the boys' hockey team. They entered the postseason as the 11th seed in the South Division III bracket and will battle six-seeded Bishop Stang in the first round. Hopkinton finished the regular season with 12 wins, six losses, and two ties. The Hillers hockey team will have a tough road ahead to get to later parts of the tournament, but certainly have a team that features a lot of talent. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, March 1st at 5 p.m., Boston area poet Anna Warwick shares her poetry expressing her truths and beliefs on a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. On Monday, March 4th at 6.30 p.m., Mary McLeod gives us a tour of the Senior Center Thrift Shop on a new episode of Senior View. And at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton Zoning Advisory Committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, March 5th at 6 p.m., the Hopkinton Board of Selectmen's meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And on Wednesday, March 7th at 7 p.m., the Bay Path Humane Society shares their tips on keeping your pets calm on a brand new HCAM TV special. And also on HCAM Ed, the Hillers Ice Hockey Playoffs versus Bishop Stang game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget you could stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website hcam.tv as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton community calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care, and we'll talk to you again soon. The Cops for Kids with Cancer organization, in coordination with the Hopkinton Police Department, presented Hopkinton Middle School student Gabriel Sanchez with a $5,000 check to help his fight with cancer. We're from Cops for Kids with Cancer. We're a small charity basically out of Massachusetts. It was a charity started by a Boston police officer uh, who since passed away, but, um, and it's been taken over by almost all policemen and retired policemen. What we do is we raise funds through different, you know, golf tournaments, uh, 
uh, bingo nights, those type of things, you know, small scale. We pull all our money from all the police in the state, and then we get um, people recommended to us who need some help. Either a policeman recommends you, or a social worker recommends you. And uh, he's been recommended, and you know, we agree to help this family, and that's why we're here today. We only have the resources to do eight families per month in the whole of New England, actually. Um, and again, you know, this is where we elect to be. Um, what we always start off with is that, going back to what I said, it was started by a Boston policeman. Even though you know, you're Hopkins police, I happen to be state police, the, um, we give a Boston police patch, <laughs> so whenever he looks at it, he'll realize the, you know, these guys That's did it. That's right. <laughs> but you know, we represent all police. You know, uh, and then we always start off with, we uh, always give everybody a beer, oh. and uh, you don't have to, you can hide that, you don't have to bring it back to school. <laughs> <laughs> that was my I'll one concern to the chief. I said, Chief, there's a chief beers on the guys here. I mean, we're not giving them the beer. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you what happened is, I was similar 10 years, 15 years ago, and my friend who happened to be in the New Jersey State Police, him and his wife come to my house and bring me a five foot Mickey Mouse. I still can't hide that. <laughs> you know, and I'm, never, I'm never sure when he's gonna show up, so I can't put it in the cellar. And then we give you a shirt, one of our shirts, a Coffee Kids Cancer shirt. Now you don't have to wear these things, it just tells us who we are. And if you wear ball caps, we give you a ball cap, you know. And we have a few other things here, and uh, even for, for all the policemen here too, is that I, I always bring pins. And um, and that, you know, that's the same one that I have them on my lapel. Oh, thank you. Chief. Thank you, sir. We've done uh, 669 families. Wow, so that's far. incredible. For over $3.3 million. That's uh, incredible. And uh, a great part of it comes from the marathon, which Billy's in charge of. Oh, yeah. You know, raising so. money from the, from the marathon. Mm -hmm. So we have a great fondness for Hopkinton. Absolutely. And, and Boston. <laughs> and a great fear of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing worse than coming here at 7 o'clock in the morning on race day. <laughs> and not being paid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did but, the marathon in Boston for 40 years. Wow. Uh, the first one was uh, they did it at the Lexington Hotel and they gave the guy a wreath. Yeah. For his head. <laughs> and that was all we got. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's going back to when he started as a policeman in 1948. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh at him. <laughs> Don't encourage him. Don't encourage him. <laughs> right. I'm going to tell you, this is the first time I've ever gone somewhere when he doesn't look like the professor there from uh, Back to the Future. <laughs> <laughs> He's cut three inches of hair off. I don't know why. <laughs> but no, we, you know, we really hope that everything goes good. You know, you can contact. You see all your friends running all the place, so you, if you need anything, you know, they're the ones you want to go to. And if you have anything in the hospital, you can go to me because I'm there all the time, too. Oh, you know, the, um, you. You know I'm, I'm usually there once a week, or the chief, too.